Hey, Nathan here, helping you become a better jungler. I have a review request from a player on the North American server. His silver one, this is a Zack game of his. It is a win. This is actually, I think, the first Zack review I've done, so pretty excited about this one. Uh, why do you want me to review this game specifically? He says he's incredibly happy with how patiently I played this game. Knowing my team outscaled, the enemy full assassin comp was going to fall off. My mental was strong this game, and I encouraged my team to just hold on. We got this late game. I played away from Dino as best I could and just let my bot lane die. Knew there was nothing I could do there, so I concentrated on giving Riven a fed and keeping Syndra safe. My main focus this game was getting control of topside and taking Rift to keep us even in turret plates and farming effectively so I could scale into an unkillable engage tank. Love the um, the thought process mentality here. Yes, if you especially champs into Zed, Zach is such a good pick. Dinah is purely burst. I mean, even Jin. Jin's like a not really consistent damage AD carry. He's more of like a burst AD carry. So this is an excellent pick. Obviously, Lux bindings, build Merc treads, that's whatever. And Aurelia, I mean, she does have some consistent damage with Conqueror. But, um, you know, you'll be, be able to build actually a lot of AD this game, so it'll make you really tanky. Any specific moments in the game, what we need to focus on? A new bot was gone at about 10 minutes, just gave up on it entirely. Focus on getting Riven ahead and keeping playing Syndra safe, okay? Alright, so this looks like, wanted to donate plate money to Syndra, but she wanted to leave. I spam ping her stay for plates. Alright, we'll take a look at this one. You didn't mention the time. So it tries to invade in the jungle, I was laughing at him and keep clearing. Still Baron. After that, Baron was just engaged. Okay, so yeah. So it sounds like the story of this game, early game. Let's take a look at it. But late game, I mean, yeah, I definitely agree. We won't really need to touch on that. I think you just get to a point where you outscale. Which lane did, ident did he identify as his win condition in the early game? Wanted to get bot lane ahead, but they just kept dying, so I gave up on them. Then I wanted to get Riven ahead, and I think I succeeded in doing so. Just wanted to keep Syndra safe. I knew I'd get up to see Drakes until we scaled, so I basically just avoided the boss side of the map. All right, let's take a look at it. Let's see what you could have done better. Okay, so let's take a look at your runes. Aftershock, this is the go-to best rune on here. Zach, obviously, after you engage with your E, you get the Aftershock. Makes you very tanky and annoying to deal with. Font of Life, this obviously works as well off your E and Q. So this is really good just to help your laners heal up a little bit. Conditioning, just going to make you super tanky. Revitalize works with his passive when he heals up, when he walks around, picks up his blobs, and Magic Footwear Cosmic Insight. This is great because you can rush your Cinder Hulk as soon as possible and get pretty tanky early on. You don't need to worry about Brutes, and I mean, obviously it gives you extra move speed as well, which, I mean, it's very little, but it does help. And you take Cosmic Insight here, which I think is really good on Zac, especially, you know, building items like Stone Plate and stuff for that CDR. But the biggest thing is you're an entirely cooldown ability champion like you don't do any damage with auto attacks getting that extra cdr is really important and then you go cdr armor healthier okay so i always go cdr on the first row the second row i sometimes switch this out to adaptive if i feel like i need you know a little bit more damage if i'm versing maybe like a, a tank or um you know some bruiserish champions but i think it makes a lot of sense you to go armor health this game this is going to make you super tanky again just go full tank mode so i think your runes are literally spot on perfect this game Okay, so let's jump into the early game now. So, I'm um, talking a little bit about Zach and his early clear. So we'll get about to about one minute here. Oh, your laners. Oh, this is a really risky invade. They could all be stacking. Lux is there. She does miss her Cunyu going for a ward here. Okay, this that was very ambitious. I think that's a bit risky, but it does work. I can see that falling, you know, backfire on you many games but yes yeah. so, i mean actually the bad thing about this as well you're actually late to your camp by like five seconds this is not ideal all right so talking a little bit about zach in terms of early clear paths so i talk a lot about you know create your early jungle path around like where you want to focus put pressure wing condition i feel like zach is very much you have to get level four on him before you do anything on the map so your early path should just be like pretty binary um, and then you can start impacting the map at level 4. So what I'll be doing here is pretty much full clearing. I'll be doing... I'll always start where my bot lane is just so I can get, you know, clear as quickly as possible so I can impact the map. So on this side, always start red. On the other side, I'll start blue. Um, and my jungle path will be red, Krugs, Raptors, uh, Wolves, blue, Grom. Look to maybe get Rift Skull and maybe have to give it up. Base, go back bot side for Rift Scutlight and Krugs. I think that's the best pass for Zach. The problem with level 3 ganking with Zach, yes, you can do it, but if you die, lose your passive from it, 
like, and then you get some counter jungle, like, it will really set you far behind. I'm just trying to eliminate risk, especially in these lower elos, like, the enemy jungler's not going to punish you that hard for it. You know, doing the level 4 clear, if at all. Okay, so yeah, this is an inefficient clear. You do red into, and you use a big smart, you use a smart on the big raptor camp. Don't do this. Um, I'll be using it again for the big krug, and then saving it for when I do grump and blue. So your early pathing on Zack should be needs to be polished up a little bit. So we do see Diana there. So this is actually pretty good. Looks like Aurelia is actually going pretty ham in him, potentially warding your blue buff. Might need to be a little bit until Aurelia shows, but you do have E to get. Okay, she actually has watered that. Okay. Oh, I would be backing off here. Okay, she actually decides to back off because Syndra has priority. That was really risky. You shouldn't have started blue until you f at least forced the Aurelia out. Okay, so also tip in terms of doing the blue and Gromp. So you can do these camps. You're doing this not the way you want to be doing it with Zach. You can do it way more efficiently in terms of kidding them both at once. And I'm going to show you an example. So let's take a look at this Zach here. And this is a perfect example of how you want to be doing Gromp and blue buff. So you see here, he auto attacks it, kites it into about the middle, and then gets the Q on them, and he just goes and constantly hitting these with his W, and his Hunter Talisman is also doing the damage. Here. So this is just way more efficient, but you need to make sure you're not resetting blue. So you need to be hugging this side of the wall for it to work properly. Like you need to be very much on that side of the wall. He uses Smart on Gromp, and this will clear that camp way faster. So I hope that helps you there. That's just a tip to do that. Uh, blue and Gromp a little bit quicker. Alright, so we know that Dyna is bot side, so we do have a free Rift Scuttler here, which is really good. And... Actually, we don't know exactly... Does she have blue buff? I, can't, I could never sit tell with the buffs, because the spectate mode. Maybe she actually is potentially top side, but Syndra, you have top priority. Your Syndra just killed Zed. This is still pretty free. Rift Scuttler. Alright, then you base. Great. Let's base. Go down for Krogs. Alright, Dyna fail gank, base, let's go down to Krugs. This is just not really gankable. Like, the wave is in not really good position. I mean, I guess you're potentially looking for a counter gank here, but all you have to do is just place a ward. Actually, come here, place a ward, protect your Riven, let him push this in safely. Base, go Krugs. You don't want to be showing top here at all, because then that just gives the enemy Dyna potential to, like, base and, you know, take your Raptors and, and your Krugs. So this is not going to work. Like, Aurelia, the wave is in a bad position. Aurelia is low mana. She's not going to commit to the Riven. Yeah, the worst part about this is you showed for no reason. All right, so I love the control ward here. Actually, Rift Scuttler is still up. Dyna hasn't gotten this yet. So this is actually really good for potentially, potentially double Rift Scuttler. Okay, and Dyna actually kills the Riven top. So yeah, so if you watered that, I, I almost guarantee you that uh, Riven would have been safe there. Alright, I would have probably done Rift Scuttler first. Always think of it in terms of Vision first and then do Raptor Camps. But I guess in this situation, you know that Dyna is 100% top. So Vision is not that useful, actually. It's more efficient. But in general, always get Vision first and then go do your camps. Alright, so Bot does have priority, but you can't gank them. They're too low. And yeah, I'll definitely go in here, hit this plant. Nice. Tracker. Oh, you missed. You should always hit this plant. Deny it. Always when you can. It is really important to deny that plant when you're around. Okay, what are you doing here? You definitely can't 1v2 this. Okay, you place a control ward. Alright, see, so that control ward's okay, but the fact that you're going to lose mid priority now, you don't have bot priority, like, it's sort of overkill here. You've already got enough wards to, like, track the diner. You need to save it for river. It's way more important for control, for dragon. So what you want to do here is... I mean, again, this ideally your raptor camp's still up. It would just be way more efficient to do this, but you should do this anyway. Someone's calling me. So what you want to do here is... Like, dragon's not an option. You don't have priority bot, you don't have priority mid. So you want to create an efficient jungle path around getting this objective as quickly as possible. There's nothing more for you to do here. Go do your wolves, your gromp, base reset, come down for krugs, and look to control bot. It's a, You're wasting a lot of time just walking around here. So there's nothing for you to do. You can't do dragon. And the worst part about this now is that now the enemy team could maybe be looking to pressure dragon. 
And you, you the, the inefficient thing here is you don't have your top side camps anymore, you know? Like, you sort of stuck down here to get in red and stuff. I think that was actually your first Krugs of this game as well. So that's definitely a big problem. You should at least have two to three Krugs by seven minutes. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is the reason why you're level five right now. All right, so these wards that you actually do right here is really good. This helps Syndra kill the Diana. But you, go, you actually get hit by Dragon here. This is not ideal. You definitely need to protect the Syndra. Did you E over the wall or hit the Blast Cone? Hit the blood. You don't have E to help him. This is a huge mistake in terms of ability usage. Look at this. You could have E'd him and like potentially one shot him in that. And then, you know, Syndra survive. Okay, you can definitely not do Dragon now. So, Zaki is very squishy. You don't have items. Remember, you haven't base. You don't have a Barmy Cinder at the moment. Dunan is going to be potentially coming back on the map now. Like, this is very risky. You cannot do Dragon. Like, Zach, in terms of a tank jungler, you need to set up Dragons very well. Like, you're not like an Olaf or a... Lee Sin or something like that where you can do drags and sustain really well, you take a lot of damage from Dragon. So again, what you wanted to do here is just like back off like as soon as Syndra died. I mean, ideally, again, that wouldn't have happened if you Blast Cone instead of E, do Raptors, Wolves, your Grunt Blue base reset to go bot side. You have like good control here anyway. Like you'll be able to tell if the enemy team is doing Dragon, but you even might need to give it up. You even said it yourself, you might need to concede Dragons. And the worst thing about that fight as well is that Dinah didn't have ult for it. So, like, Zed had an advantage in that fight. You know, like, Syndra is a much more useless champion without her ult. Alright, I would not be looking to fight here at, at all. Even if you get kills here, you're going to potentially have to use your passive. And you, you can't get Dragon off this anyway. Because you guys are all too low. Uh, Dinah's going to be back on the map. Like, you want to be... You need to be really using your... Your, your passive, so you do go in here, as a valuable resource, and now you lose passive, and potentially we're going to die here. Alright, you do survive. No, you don't survive. Okay. So, now you don't have passive for a dragon fight. The passive for Zack is so important. It wins you objective fights. You need to try and save it for that, not waste it like that. Always think, like, what am I going to get off this? Doesn't make sense for me to go on this. Like, even if we get kills, can I still get objectives or we can do anything off it? You know, the worst thing about this, all your camps are up and you're dying. You're just wasting so much time. It's a really inefficient dying. All right, so I love that you switch out to Sweeper Trinket. You have a control wall. This is great. Yeah, you need to go top side here. There's not much you can do in terms of dragon. Like, you need to get level six as well. It's nine minutes. You're still level five. Again, highlighting here, inefficiency in jungle pathing. All right, so you actually gum gang top here. This is okay. You're here, but you potentially lose dragon for this. But I mean, Riven actually is pretty good to get ahead. Like you did call it in terms of, like she can actually start snowballing out of control. So actually, I think starting to look now, like given that dragon's probably going to go, I actually would start to really hammer top and look to get Rift Herald. Use that as my win condition. All right, so Syndra burns her stopwatch there. Can't kill this guy, but just defend this. This is good. I love it how you just focused on minions, not worried about Zack at all. Got all the CS. That was really good from you. Your bot has died here. Yeah. So this is definitely starting to look like bot's going to be a little bit hard to focus. Yeah, I'll be looking at Riven right now. I don't think you can contest this. Zed's going to be back on the map. Bot has priority. Yeah, just give it up. Do your Krugs. Base, go topside. And let's regank this Aurelia. Okay, definitely falling a bit far behind in the early game here. Okay, so you go Lucidity Boots. Rule for Zack and Lucidity Boots. Only I only go Lucidity Boots if I feel like I'm really snowballing. I think this is a very important Merc Treads game because your Diana that you're playing against is very fed. Yes, it gives you the AP there. But just for champs like Lux, Jin, Aurelia CC, it's going to help you a lot. Lucidity Boots is going to make you a little bit more squishy. You only need that when you're really far ahead and you, you're, you're all good for tankiness. So that's sort of the rule for, like... Lucidity Boots, Cooldown Boots, think of it as a snowballing item. Other than that, get Ninja Tarbs or Merc Treads. Again, I think this is a good Merc Treads game. Alright, so here you go. Uh, this Riven's literally like 1v2 in and stuff now. So yeah, I'll be looking to... This is your win condition. Great Rift Herald call. You have priority. Top. Dinah's low. She had to base off that. And Zed. Syndra gets the kill on Zed. Awesome work. I love this Rift Herald call.
Alright, so I'll be looking to base off this straight away. Get two control wards again. Go down bot, clear your bot side, work your back up, back up top. And I'll actually be looking to break this tower. This is the priority I'll be looking to break with Rift Herald here. Okay, this is a huge mistake. So, yes, I know it's starting to become 14 minutes. And you're like, well, I want to get plates. But, I mean, this is actually this is the thing you talked about in your... Um, Review request. So here you said, I wanted to donate plate on Nisindra, but she wanted to leave. I can understand why she wants to leave. She has, she needs to reset. She has no mana, no health. You cannot get this tower. Zed's going to be back by the time. This is like literally four plates. Griffield doesn't get this quick enough and you need to use this top. It's way more important. And Syndra's going to die from this now as well. So the way you want to view, especially on tank junglers, like I could maybe see giving plates. I'm actually starting to lean towards Griffield. You must get a tower with it. Like, it's so important, and especially as a tank jungler, because your siege isn't good, you need to get kills. Um, using Rift Herald to, like, bait them to, like, defend the tower and then dive in them is, you know, obviously a really good thing as well. Just use it to get towers. This is absolutely your fault there. Syndra had to base. She, had, she was useless. It's got nothing to do with the plate in at all. All right, so now I would be looking to full clear bot side, go top side. This is your win condition. Riven is doing pretty well, even though he's behind CS. Zack tries to come kill you here, but you're pretty tanky. You do burn ult for that. Yeah, just do Krugs. Let's go topside. All your camps are spawning. Oh, Zed literally wastes his ult on you. This is not going to work. Right, well, like, I mean, I guess Syndra can get this tower now for what Zed's doing. I don't know what he's doing here. So, I mean, in hindsight, like, it actually look, looks like it works well, but I would have used it again to, you know, pressure top. Alright, so, you buy a Spectre's Cow, I think this is okay given Diana is very fed, but you really do need armor items, like if you think about it, you actually need to be a little bit afraid of Zed and Aurelio and Jin because you actually don't have any armor items, so you, you can easily fall into the trap that you're false sensely, like, tanky, and that's not really the case, alright, so you don't actually ganks Riven top, that's not ideal. But top lane, top side is still your win condition. I'll still keep hammering this. Come defend top here. Potentially should have left your blue for this. She almost gets a tower, but you do kill her there. Yeah, I definitely think you should have left blue for that. Should have left blue. But, nonetheless, good kill on Aurelia there. Riven should be able to actually get this tower now. Which is really good. Especially with Dragon coming. Actually, no, you've just lost Dragon. But this is fine. This is worth it. Check her jungle camps, take raptors, good counter jungling, come here, defend mid. Alright, so it's 17 minutes in the game. Yes, dragon's gone. I mean, actually, second rift shield's coming up pretty soon. Maybe you can't get this objective. I would probably look to prepare for rift herald, second rift herald. Do raptors, do your krugs, base reset, go top side, clear your camps and prepare for rift herald. Again, creating a jungle path in around objectives. Oh, this was very risky to actually walk into bot side jungle here now that I look at it. Diana's missing, enemy bot lane, like Jin's missing. Like there's nothing for you to achieve here. This is actually a pretty greedy path in. I mean, I know you're going to check your Krugs, but potentially need to be a little bit more cautious, but you did survive there. You got your Spirit Visage now. That's good. That really synergizes well with his passive, and you can't buy controls, unfortunately, which is not ideal. So yeah, second Rift Herald's up. It's going to be much harder to get this without control wards. But really good coming on this Riven here, killing these guys. Alright, so I'll, I'll, the fact that you really need control wards for this Rift Herald, um, you need to base right now, buy two control wards, spend your 1200 gold, get some armor items. I need you to get armor items. Like, there's nothing you can really do here. You're just going to waste time. Look at this. Like, you could have based and been here right now. Like, all of what you've done here. Look at, look at all this time you wasted when you could have used it to get control wards. Now... Yeah, Rift Herald's just not an option anymore. Oh, actually, maybe it still is with Diana bot. But I guess your cast is bot. It's fine. But, importance of control wards. Whenever you don't have them on your inventory, there's nothing really you feel like you can do. Just base. Even if you feel like you even if you feel like you just base and you're on like 150 gold. Base, get those control wards. It will help you for objectives. It's really important. You know, past like 13 minutes of the game when Rift Herald and Barons, you know, become an objective pretty soon.
Right, so we do see these guys bot, and you're looking to engage. Huge mistake. We don't know what Rio Aurelia is. Aurelia actually was here. She could be potentially coming for this fight. But you cannot fight without your Riven. He's your strongest member by far. He has a stopwatch, a death's dance. He's absolutely out of control. You cannot be fighting here. This is a... And here comes Aurelia. This is a really bad fight. Simple methodology. Always fight with your strongest member. Riven is that person. He's topside. And you die from this and lose your passive from it. Huge mistake. You actually might... You're going to lose all control of topside now. You're going to get priority pushed in mid. And even the enemy team can pressure Baron here. But Riven actually comes here. The enemy team gets some picks. But I can't emphasize enough how much of a mistake that was. Alright, so you actually got bot sub. Your team's looking to start Baron here. This is great call by your team. Just do Baron. You have two control wards. Place your control ward in your pit. You don't know if they have vision of this. Let's get it securely. Dinah is alive. She could be looking to steal this. Yeah, you had control to place it in the pit whenever you're doing Baron just to deny enemy vision. But this is great. We got Baron. All right. So the way that I'm viewing this Baron is more like just to get you back into this game to outscale. I wouldn't actually be making too many risks in terms of fights on Siege and Towers. I'll literally just try and stall out the game a little bit more. You will literally 100% win this game past like 27, 28 minutes based on their comp and the fact that they're Zed and Dino are the most fed. Right, a little bit risky, actually. We didn't know where the rest of the team was, but that does work. Yep, just keep pushing out waves. And there's no rush in this game. You can win this game very methodically. In terms of literally just outscaling. Alright, Casa drags them bot. But I would be looking to potentially hover Riven still. Maybe actually could have helped him kill this. But, I mean, he's just so fed he can kill this guy. Oh, she burns flash. Alright, I'll leave this. Just let Syndra die. No point risking your Baron. Alright, so really important. Fourth Dragon is coming up soon. This needs to be a crucial point for you in terms of you must deny this Dragon Soul from the enemy team. Good kill on the Diana. This is actually going to help you get more control. So, what you want to do here. You have 2400 gold. Dragon's going to be about, up in about 90 seconds or so. You need to base, get, spend your gold... Oh, you have a lot of gold now. Spend your gold, base, get two control wards, get your Thor mail. You need to reset for this dragon. All right, Zed's actually pushing this. He's probably going to get away. He actually gets away there. That's fine. Clear this. Base. Dragon a minute. Let's base, 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 base. So, this is a big mistake. You have 3,300 gold. Dragon's not up for about another 40 seconds. So, you have the time to base. You're going to be fighting when you could be so much stronger. Like, like you have to think of... Like, gold in your inventory is wasted gold. You need to think of your 3.2k gold right here as, like, it doesn't exist. Because you haven't spent it yet. So, even though the gold scores 44k to 47k, it actually... Because you literally haven't pressed the B button and bought items, the, the gold is actually 41,000 to 40, 48,000, basically. So, that's a huge deficit lead. That's like a 6-7k gold lead. Right there. The enemy teams all spent their gold. So it's just it's just a risk not worth taking. You, you even said it yourself. You outscale. Buy those items to help you outscale. You must defend this. And you don't have control wards for it either. Oh, you guys actually going to have to give this up? No, actually your team's literally killing them. You actually do win that team fight. So, I mean, this is sort of a sign where you guys are getting pretty strong. But, point is, before a major objective, spend, try and spend your gold. Especially when you have 3.2k gold. Alright, so I'll do Krugs here. Good experience in gold. Base for Baron, super important. But you're actually looking to come up here. Actually, you can't really buy anything. I mean, maybe you even base just to buy a the health potion, the tenacity potion for this Baron fight. You will literally just not lose this Baron fight at all. Right, so Riven's actually looking to potentially get caught here. He dies, unfortunately. Alright, so this is actually not good for you. They might actually start Baron. Syndra died there as well. Actually, this is where you say you get a Baron still. So, let's actually take a look at this. Zack is a very good Baron still champ. And you have vision of this. So, look at this. This is such a prime example. They don't have control wards in the pit. You can literally achieve this because they're not buying control wards. This is why I say control wards win games. The amount of pressure that, that you'll put on, they'll put on you here. For this blue, then you, you know, there you go. You take the Baron because you have full vision of it. 
that's such a perfect example of why I say control wards win games. Alright, so that's your second Baron. Awesome. Oh, you die there. I don't think that was worth you taking that fight at all. Back off here. Yeah, so this is fine. Riven can easily kill these guys. He's level 16. He has death stance for life still. No point risking a death here. He's fine. Look at this. You just give Aurelia a free kill. For no reason. I always think, can my teammates do this without me? Just base. Don't feel the need to always be like in fights all the time to get assists and kills. Be this, do the smarter thing. Alright, so. Team's pushing lanes out. You're dead for a little bit longer. You come back on the map. You buy a stopwatch. This is great. And we're fighting without Riven again. So this is actually, this is stuff that can lose you games. This is a big throw. Riven is in base. Simple mathematics, four versus five. Yes, you guys are pretty strong still, but no reason to risk the game like this. You could literally have thrown the game here. But they overchase. You guys kill that. Riven's just out of control. He's got GA now. Literally unkillable. The enemy team can't assassinate him anymore. Denied fourth dragon again. Win team fight. Yeah, there's not much point going. I think this game is literally over at this stage. You're just unkillable, especially the fact that you've stopped watching everything now. Let's just take a look in case there's anything more to take a look at here. Base. Tell your team to base here. I love the danger pings. Back off pings. And... Baron is now third. Baron's coming up. Kill Lux. Yeah, get Baron. Good pick on Lux there into Baron. Pushing out top. Ideally, potentially waiting for Syndra to set this up. But, again, you guys are too strong. You guys are going to end the game here. Alright. So, yeah. A lot to work on in terms of your early game here. In terms of mindset for Zach. This is actually really fun in terms of... I love looking at tank champions like Zach. I actually think Zach is a really good solo queue champion. Like, you get to a point... Like, this is a perfect example. You just, like, outscale. Because the enemy teams in silver, gold, like, they... And platinum, like they cannot end games. I don't know how to end games correctly. There's always everyone's going for kills all the time, which Zach, you know, thrives in. So you can check out my full notes from this review over on my blog, NathanMott.gg. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.